Assalamu alaikum. My brothers and sisters, the 10th of Muharram every year sees a dispute among members of the Ummah. And unfortunately, people argue over what should be done, what shouldn't be done, what exactly happened and what is the significance of this day. So I wish to simplify things and only to mention points that I think we can all nod our heads and say, yes, this is something I need. What happened? Initially, we did not know anything about the 10th of Muharram until we were told by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Had he not told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we would have known nothing about the 10th of Muharram and perhaps we wouldn't have held it in any significance, but he did tell us, so that becomes irrelevant. He told us, what did he say? Well, when they arrived in Medina Munawwara, the Jews of Medina, the Jewish community of Medina, not necessarily the entire Jewish faith, but those who were in Medina Munawwara, they used to fast on this day, the 10th of Muharram. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was told when they inquired why they fasted, that, well, this was the day that the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, Musa alayhi salam, was saved. So there is discrepancy as to being saved from the Pharaoh, being saved in any other way. But the majority say saved from the Pharaoh. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, well, we are more deserving of the Prophet Musa or Moses, may peace be upon him, than them. So we will fast this day. He fast the 10th. And then he said, if I am around next year, I will fast the 9th and the 10th to make it two days so that I can be different from this community. So subhanAllah, that was the significance to, to celebrate or commemorate the victory of the oppressed over the oppressor. The lesson learned is very clear and it is more the lesson. Any one of us being oppressed, it's not going to last forever. A day will come when you will have victory. Wow, subhanAllah, I'm happy, I'm excited about that. So a day will come when you will have victory. Things will change. Your tough days cannot last forever. Allah will definitely give you days of ease. And as for those who are oppressors, you wrong people, you harm them, you make their lives difficult, you abuse them, your day is coming too. So you'd rather turn to Allah before that day, unlike the Pharaoh who didn't turn until he was punished. Then it was too late. So that in a nutshell is the undisputed significance of this particular day among the Muslims. Among the Muslims, we believe that yes, there is significance and we believe that it is the victory of the oppressed over the oppressor and the vast majority would say it is a sunnah to fast. It's not compulsory. You don't have to fast, but it's a sunnah to fast. And if you're fasting, it's better to fast two days. And if really uh, you were able to just fast one day, it's okay. Now, decades later, after the Prophet's time, one of his grandsons, Al Hussein oh, uh, ibn Ali, anhuma, was martyred. He was martyred on the same day. By who? By others who were also companions or who were Muslim. Okay? They said the Shahada. They declared themselves as Muslim. They read Salah, but the hypocrites made them fight. And I'm simplifying this to, for the lowest level of understanding. So here you have two groups of Muslims and the hypocrites made them fight each other until they murdered each other, which resulted in the murder or the martyrdom of al Hussein ibn Ali radiyallahu anhumah. One of the greatest of the companions of the Prophet Al Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu anhuma, the son of the fourth Khalif of Islam, the son of the cousin of the Prophet Muhammad sallam, but primarily the grandson, the son of the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We are saddened. We bleed every year when we think of it, and every time we think of it, not necessarily only during this occasion, but throughout the year. It's it's a point of sadness. But what I believe the lesson we haven't learned to this day. We are still fighting each other, still killing each other. What did we learn? Primarily, what's of the greatest importance is the lesson. Like I said, the one about oppression, the one about the oppressed. 
Similarly, the one about allowing hypocrites to make you fight each other and kill each other. You're saying the Shahada on both sides. Why are you killing each other? Why do you have so much of hate for each other within the Ummah? That is something we need to remedy. And I think an occasion like this, if you know the reality of it, and you're true to the deen of Allah, and you're true to Allah, you would actually learn the lessons from what happened to Al Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu anhuma, rather than making it an occasion of hate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So you have people who say, oh, let's celebrate by distributing good food and so on on this day. I believe that's a fabrication. I wouldn't do that. I don't want to do it. There are others who say, well, the narration is okay. That's up to you. I believe that's a narration fabricated. Islam does not give importance to food and drink except during the two Eids. That's it. Otherwise, food and drink on an occasion like this, no. I personally believe that narration is fabricated. If you don't, alhamdulillah, I'm not going to fight you because I've learned a lesson that what's more important is not to kill each other over something. It's a difference of opinion. Subhanallah. However, there is the other side of the coin. People who are so saddened and they believe you can, cannot get married, they believe you have to wear black, they believe you have to beat yourself, etc. That also is a fabrication. To me, that's a fabrication. Because you're missing the whole point. The whole point was something happened in the history later on, after decades after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and we didn't learn a lesson from that. We didn't, we still don't have the love, we still don't have the care, we still don't have uh, the, the goodness, the good feeling in the hearts. Rather, we are filled with more hate than they. And we are filled with the readiness and preparedness to kill each other, subhanAllah, over, over matters that we disagree on sometimes. My brothers and sisters, I wish to say, no matter what sect you belong to, don't kill others. Don't. You may believe you are right. It's okay. You, as a human being, you have the right to believe you're right. I believe I'm right too. But how you communicate that, don't you have the confidence in the truth that you are holding such that you can present your opinion and its evidences and walk away? That's it. You know, the duty of the Messenger ﷺ was to convey the message. So we are the followers of the Messenger. Convey the message. Look, I believe this. I've given it to you and I believe we should actually learn a lesson which is more important than anything else. For me, the significance of the 10th of Muharram primarily is that of the victory of the oppressed over the oppressor, oppressor and oppression, uh, the story of Musa alayhi salam and the Pharaoh, and perhaps the fasts that come in the Sahih narrations. And thereafter, what happened in history is a lesson. It's a lesson. We don't really draw the lesson we don't really take heed and still we make a big noise during this occasion and we actually defeat the entire purpose of whatever happened may allah grant us goodness i want to call on you all my brothers and sisters while you're doing whatever you believe you have to do to understand we are one ummah come what may no matter how much you feel that the other man who's saying Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah is a deviant, he has said that shahada and who knows that will come to his rescue by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. May Allah forgive me, I thought really I would mention this, I'm in no ways belittling anything that happened on this day. For me, one of my heroes is Al Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu anhuma, and he should be for every Muslim. The family of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, should be more important than our own families and ourselves. Indeed. But what's the lesson we learned? That's the question. Do we still go around falling into the trap of the same hypocrites who make us hate each other, fight each other, kill each other, while we belong to the same ummah? Can we not respectfully, in a very dignified way, express what differences we have and Refrain from swearing each other, calling each other dirtiest of names. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the lesson. I hope we've benefited from this and I hope that we've not misunderstood what I've tried to say. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.